All right. So uh, before we talk about the Batman, uh, we have to talk about one of the films that um, primarily inspired it, right? That would be the 2007 film Zodiac, right? Um, this is from you know the the, the man, the myth, the legend himself, David Fincher, um, and you know this this film actually celebrated its 15th anniversary on the same day that the Batman comes out, right? Co- um, came out, sorry. Um, that would be March 2nd, right? coincidence maybe or maybe not right <laughs> i don't know right yeah um so i'll just do like a, a quick just run through of uh well i will just more or less do a run through of you know the, the the stuff that took place in the film just you know a lot of stuff that took place in this in this movie um especially for you know it's really long run time right but um you know it's just more or less cliff notes right i'm not gonna spend too 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 long you know diving deep into into this mm-hmm. film right or you know what not um, but I do want to do an intro, right? As it is a retrospect review, and you know, you guys could share your individual histories with the film, right? So for me, um, David Fincher, right? I mean, I, I've, I've spoken, I, I spoke about his his work before on retrospect reviews. I, you know, I, I covered seven um, on its 25th anniversary as well. Um, it's still, well, I would say, as far as you know, my favorite um, David Fincher films. Um, for me, it is still Fight Club from 1999. I actually did a review of that with uh, Summerlee and Ricardo, right? Um, on another show, right? But I would put Seven as a close Seven. Uh, sorry, close Second. Oops, right? Um, and it's almost to <laughs> the point that I can have both. Yeah, I can have both Fight Club and, and Seven be at the top, though, because yeah, I think those are just absolute five out of fives. Those are masterpieces, in my opinion. Ne- flawless, in my opinion. I was always saying they are flawless, but I think they are flawless, right? But when it came to Zodiac, no, this is always a film that, um, well, all right. So for me, I, I knew when it came out in theaters, right? But um, I don't know, just for some reason, I just didn't care to see it at the time, right? Um, I'm, I'm not sure why. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just priorities or whatever. But I, I didn't go and see it theatrically, right? Um, I saw this like a few years later on cable. I saw it once, actually. And I appreciated it for what it was, though. But, you know, for me at the time, I just felt it was just way too long. It was a police procedure. It was a mystery, murder mystery. But I just felt like, you know, it, it wasn't as tense or as shocking or as, you know, nightmarish as, say, you know, Seven, right? Or, you know, um, or, or had a lot of suspense, like, say, The Game or um, Panic Room, right? So I just kind of treat it as, you know, it's just a period piece and okay, well, all right, that was, that was interesting, right? But over the years, I mean, a lot of people say this is, you know, one of the best movies of, you know, the 2000s. And um, I would say, some people would say of, of the 21st century, right? Of the 21st century. Yeah? Um, but yeah, over the years, a lot of people would say that this is Fincher's uh, most underrated um, film, right? And uh, watching this film over again, this is actually the second time that I saw it in preparation for this, right? I do totally understand why I didn't get to the first time, though. Uh, why I think a lot of people just probably, you know, why, why people, you know, didn't click to it as, see, you know, something more... Um, you know, blockbuster really, you know what I mean? Or, or something more audacious, right? Like see a panic room or whatnot, right? But uh, I would make the argument that this is a way more mature look at the serial killer than what Seven was, right? Seven was really 90s edginess, but this one just felt, and yes, I know it's, it's set in the 70s, right? Well, part of it, right? But yeah, there was a much, there was a more, there was there was more richness to it. There was more texture. There's more maturity to it, right? It wasn't about shocking the viewer. It was more about the fact that, yes, these things did happen that's that's the shocking part about this whole movie that literally everything that you saw here did happen right and i mean you have to give credit where credit is due the meticulous detail that um that fincher put into this film dreaded to even even recreate certain crime scenes and whatnot right he like locations and all that kind of stuff he recreates that stuff in this one film dread right so yeah i mean there's a lot to marvel and amaze that with uh, be amazed that sorry with this film right but as far as whether it is whether it's one of his greats though, that is what I will answer near the end of this um, discussion here, right? Uh, but Ricardo, um, uh, yeah, just uh, your your history with um, Zodiac and how you think it compares with uh, with with you know Fincher's work, sir. Oh yeah, yeah, roughly similar to you. Don't don't take it too seriously. Um, you know, it works as a procedural kind of thing, but it, you never really get no sense of big horror or anything like that. Because throughout the film, I, given that you watch, I was like. Oh yeah, they're gonna get to the part where you know, they're gonna have to confront him, or he's gonna hunt him down, or something like that. I was like, oh no, that didn't happen, right? It was just straightforward. And well, the, the only thing that this brought up, 
in the real real life was in the late last year um they claimed to have solved the actual story like this this got it wrong because they who they had i forget the guy's name alan um Arthur Lee Allen. Arthur Lee, right. Allen, he, he, they, they have a lot of evidence that why he's not it, and they have this recent update with it. So Fincher had a project out, um, and I was thinking, oh, you're going to line up with that project. But he, he just did this, did, I forget what it was on, on Netflix. It's a bunch of... Um, like he, uh, Mank, Mank. No, not no, Mank. No, 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 uh, Mank. Mindhunter, which... No, not Mindhunter. That... Not Mindhunter. No? I'm talking about after, like, re- like late last year. He had, like, a series of little shorts. Um, um, I forget what it was. That had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, we're going to get a new series of my new season of Mine Hunter, right? To, to follow up on the whole this this new piece of information. Eh, no, apparently not. Um, so that is why this that is the reason that I, this brought back up in my head about it now. And I was like, oh yeah, the 15 anniversary coming up as well. You're gonna do something with that. So probably the new season of Mine Hunter might address it, but no. Uh he just just did this shorts and then didn't connect it at all and then moving on, right? Um, the, I forget the name of the people, the code breakers or something like that. These people who just apparently solve like cold cases and old crimes that was never solved. And, yeah. you know, it's up to you whether or not you follow um, these things because, you know, the, the whole, that whole true crime podcast thing, yeah, this was kind of the proto of that, right? This was these, yeah. you know, that paradigm, right? And that, that was interesting uh, how, how that went on to become huge and, and popular in its own right you now. Um, so yeah, um, film didn't really hit me that well. Only seen this in retrospect is like, oh yeah, Robert Downey Jr. Pl- clearly playing Iron Man here, yeah, you know, in this <laughs> boy, uh, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, it's stuff yeah, like boy. that in, in retrospect. It, just, it, it, and the, and this was pre uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, like before right, Nightcrawler, right. exactly, yes. right, yes. right, exactly. Mm. It was it was proto, right. The character, well, I would say the characters, he's kind of like the anti nightcrawler in this, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, it's 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 a movie that works in retrospect because of what happened to all these stars and how big they became, um, later on. But at the time, yeah. I remember just like liking it, not loving it. I give it a rewatch, it is meticulously well made, like simple sound design and 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 set design stuff in the background, they get really, really right. Like, they have little things like, oh, it have a pigeon in the background, it's like, wait, is that part of the shot, or did they decide to keep that in, or something like that? Mm. Like, they could easily remove that, or. Little, little small things like getting the date wrong in the calendar in the background because they had like the calendar in the background um seeing a certain time period oh i know you talk about the right. end of the film right Nin- yeah. right 1980 and then they, they mm. jump but they say no it's seven years but it's 1990 it's like oh the calendar wrong then like, oh, okay yeah cool stuff like that right um yeah it's, it's, it's one of those things you just had to watch and work out it's it's one of those things you only care for from a production end standpoint, but uh, it don't really wow me. The same way his other films do. Um, but yeah, his other other projects, more salacious projects, really work in that sense. Um, especially Mindhunter. So that's why it, you know it, it 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 brought out that aspect of Fincher. And yeah, Fincher is the crime man. You can't go wrong with it. I, I mean, I'm still in the camp that prefers his American version of um Girl with Dragon Tattoo, for example, and stuff mm. like that. You know? So yeah, well, it, it it I love it, but I don't I don't love it. Love it. It's fine. Um, right. But yeah, we're talking about in retrospect, to be honest, especially with all the little stuff in and around the whole conceit. Um, that's that's about. It. All right, uh, Daniel, your 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 history with uh, Zodiac. Well, I remember seeing the various TV spots and stuff on television for Zodiac, but I don't really remember it like that much. When it comes to David Finch, and it's not, I've seen most of his films, I. The select few I haven't seen, like I haven't seen the game, I haven't seen Fight Club. <gasps> Shocking, but uh, yeah. To uh, no, no, I haven't. I, I, seen I mean, Fight I mean, Club. like, like you saw the Matrix, right? Oh, you could have seen Fight Club. Like those <laughs> two shocking. films, like define <laughs> 1999. Trend. Um, I I'll argue being John Markovich is one of them too, but yeah, Fight Club and Matrix, that them is them is 99 films, right? You know. <laughs> I know. I, I I take that lambasting. I it, it, I really need to see it. I'll I will get to it someday, but uh, just yeah, just please don't judge me. Okay, I have. We we'll we'll try. We'll try. We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I can't guarantee anything, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Fight Club, but um, yeah, I've seen the others. I've seen Seven, Panic Room, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which I like. Girl with Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl. Uh, Zodiac, I would say, as as well made as it is, because I mean, just a little story about David Fincher. 
uh, only one film in Gone Girl. As this is to show how meticulous David Finch is with his production. I mean, Ben Affleck bet somebody that he David Fincher wouldn't even be able to tell when a camera a camera lens was misplaced and. When he, he changed the camera lens on the camera and David Fincher noticed. So it's like, yeah, he's meticulous like that well, as a filmmaker. Well, so, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, that's something you will definitely notice. I mean, come on, once you see the shot, you'll be like, uh, <laughs> come on. Facts, I mean, Ben Affleck, uh, look, you just lose worse up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but okay, <laughs> but when it comes to, I gave it a rewatch. Yeah, the, I gave it a rewatch before this review, this retrospective, and y- yeah, Zodiac was. Pretty decent. I wouldn't say it's my favorite of Fincher's films. My top two are Seven and The Social Network. Those are my top two. Okay, but okay. All right. those are, yeah, those are my top two. Uh, all the rest are pretty good as well. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Sorry if I'm straying, but uh, on the off Zodiac. But yeah, Zodiac, pretty decent. Police procedural. D- very good mystery thriller. And yeah, I, w- I would give it a, a decent 7 to 8 out of 10. All right, well, we, we, we are ranking it as yet, though. But, but, uh, but I, I, sorry, I, g- I, give, I, give my rate, I give my rate in one time. But yeah. it, it was okay. it was one time. time. <laughs> one time. One time. Wait, no stick it, yes. All right, so last but not least, uh, Tracy, your, your quick history with um, Zodiac and how you think it ranks amongst um, Fincher's works. Well, as a Capricorn. <laughs> Get that. That's a little private joke there. Um, Zodiac Oops. Capricorn. Mm. Uh, here's my thing. I I I'm, I spent my time trying to figure out what exactly, outside of working, what exactly I was doing in 2007 because I have no, <clears throat> I had no no actual memory of like sitting down whether it was on cable or going into the theaters. I have no memory of seeing Zodiac. So. Um, like I knew of the story, but I didn't actually, I don't think I've ever actually sat down to it. So I, I, I did it. This was like, I'm going to say this is my first main watch of Zodiac. When we, I knew we were going to do the retrospective review, I sat down to watch it. I'm one of those people who I like, um, uh, I, I, I like thrillers that are based on, on, on real things that are happening. So like the Jackal. Um, you know, wow. the, that, that, that movie boy. nineteen ninety seven. For those who who forgot, Richard Gere with an Irish accent. I mean, like I mean, so you know, um, that that kind of those kinds of movies, I tend to gravitate to find out what's going on. You know, what was the Uni Bombers whole point? That kind of thing. I'm not a, I'm not necessarily a true crime boy, but I mean, I will watch stuff like that. So knowing that the Zodiac is based on 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 a real thing. Um, I sat down with the intention, okay, I'm going to let me sit down and take this in because this would be like my first real watch of it. Um, Because like I said before, I have no memory of ever really sitting down to it. So I'm going to go with this is my first time. What actually, um, two things I should say uh, in terms of it. One, in terms of David David Fincher, I completely forgot that Fincher was the one who did the game. Right. And I don't know how, I mean, in 1997, I would have been like, what, 16 or some random thing like that, as I'm showing my age. And I remember the game. I, I remember watching the game. I, I, I have a vivid, like, burnt onto my brain of the game, but it hasn't really registered that it was David Fincher. So going back and seeing all the films that he took part in, that he would direct it, it was actually pretty cool. Um, for Zodiac, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll put this, and I know we, you know, there's a, another film that we're going to talk about after this, but it was one of those moments where I was sitting on watching this, and I laughed my head off in terms of, I, and I, I laughed my head off in terms of the idea of there's these movies that are inspired by, and then when you watch the inspired by movie, you kind of realize, oh, this is legitimately the movie. So in case in point, whereas like Taxi Driver is Joker. And you see um, Zodiac, uh, especially coming out of seeing the Batman, you realize, okay, this is this is legitimately, you know, that with like a superhero idea and that kind of stuff. Um, I also I will... like also like seven, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, um, and like there's this there's a, a random thing there where he's like goodbye, and I was like, okay, Matt, I see you, I hear you. 
Um, but I really did. I really did enjoy Zodiac, and it was it was also fun to see um, pop culture, present day pop culture icons in things that were that are not uh, superhero dominated. So, like uh, you know, um, I was saying before we started the idea of watching the Science Bros, uh, working as reporters, uh, Robert Downey and and and. Um, God, Mark, Taylor Mark Swift's Ruffalo. ex-boyfriend. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo was a police officer. Um, yeah. So Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey and um, Jillian Hall um, as as the cartoonist and that kind of. It was it was it was really refreshing to be honest to see them back before they were costumed and you know getting ten million for six shots, that kind of thing. Um, I think there are other David Fincher films that might. Rewatch a great deal more. Like I was watching this, and I was like, I have an urge to queue up seven for the like the fiftieth time kind of vibe. But Zodiac is Zodiac is a flick. Yeah, it is this right. So uh, I'm I'm be seeing this uh, retrospect review on the director's cut, right? Um, so it's it's actually about five minutes or either five or ten minutes longer than the theatrical cut, right? But um, uh, for me, I I, I just you know, for, for my first viewing was the director's cut, right? So I honestly don't know what's new or what, you know, was there initially, right? Uh, but basically it opens with, you know, we, we we see, well, what we think at first is the first Zodiac murder, but we learn later on that it isn't, right? But anyway, um, it's, you know, in Vallejo, um, California, um, July 4th, 1969. Um, it's this couple, uh, just pulling up names because, you know, again, based on true, on, on, you know, three events, right? Darlene Ferrin and Mike Mike Magu, right? Or oh, Mike Magu, right? If I got the name wrong, forgive me, right? But yeah, basically, you just see the Zodiac killer kind of pull up on them while they're at this park. He guns them down, literally. He has, like, this silencer on this um, 9mm um, gun, right? Um, but then there's a there's a scene, there's, like, a, a shot that shows up later on. As a, it's just excellent in terms of just framing you know who you know the zodiac killer is right because uh yeah he actually calls the cops afterwards and tells them he reports the murder he tells them it was a double murder gives them the location tells them the weapon is used and then he says he also killed those kids last year right then he says goodbye and goodbye. then he hangs up right <laughs> and then is that last scene that you see where basically yeah the guy survived I'm like okay, yeah, because right, like right. for me, I went and like oh, like both them get gunned down now because it look real brutal and 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 stuff. There's like wait, this dude actually alive now, right? Anyway, so now we get to to San Francisco. Now we introduce to Robert Greasmith, who is played by Donnie Darko himself, Jake Jenna yeah. Hall. I'm sorry, he will always be Donnie Darko to me. I'm a huge mm-hmm. Donnie Darko mm-hmm. fan. If you haven't seen it. Again, it's one of those movies you have to see before you die, right? That's just me, right? But yeah, um, he is a cartoonist. He works for the the, the Chronicle. Um, he's a dope artist, though. Like he he like just in terms of his um his skills, you know, with with the, with the pen, right? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. actually works there as well too. He plays Paul Avery, right? Yeah. Um, and then well, basically in this one morning. Oh, I forgot to mention too. Uh, Robert is a single dad. Um, he well, you know, he actually was divorced. Uh, um, there's a great moment where I actually see him like uh, with his son as a preparing to go to, um, preparing him yeah. to go to school, right? Yeah. Him, him yeah. and Chloe, him and Chloe Seven. He was very good in this. Yes, I yes, yes. I forgot yeah. how good she was in this. You know, last time I saw I her, she was, was in this movie. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I was like, wait. Last time I saw her in something big for me was um, Hit or Miss. So I was like, oh, that was a good show. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah, when, when I saw when I saw Chloe Seven, I was like, "Wait, wait, who is it? Wait, who is this?" Yeah, and, then, and, then, and, 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 and then and then I remembered that there was this coming of age show on HBO called "We Are Who We Are," and she was in it, and I was like, "Oh, that's oh, her! Yeah. That's her! Yeah. Oh, that, that's what I recognize her from." Like, right, she, right. Well, well, who she is basically, she will show up later on in the film. She will be the girlfriend to be wife of 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 um of. Um, Robert, right? Robert. Yeah, right. But here in this in this opening sequence, basically, this is where they get the first um, note from the Zodiac killer, right? Um, and he pretty much proves that he did the murder. You know, he talks about everything that he did, right? And that's that's one thing that always like a trigger about this guy, you know, that he will just like legit tell the authorities, tell the press, yes, I did this. Uh, this is how I did it. You know, he'll go into detail, like just give me enough details now. And then legit tell you, well, this is what I'm going to do next, right? Unless you do this, right? But, but later on in the movie, it, there arises a question because it's like, 
if some of the murders that he's talking about already happened so it's like right. is yes. he is he really a publicity hog or is yeah, he really committing sure. these murders right exactly kind of yeah. and you don't even know how much people was copycats or whatever it is mm-hmm. that's so right yeah. all of that here not it, they all be connected now because that's that one of the big problems with this kind of stuff you always right. have some asshole who need to copy and and fuck up your keys so whatever. yeah it's, it's one of those things that you can't believe happens though this is the one thing I love about the show here too. It it really just shows, um, because like for me, like I was I was watching this right, you know the because the show really centers on just the obsession surrounding this killer, right? Everybody yeah. wants to know not so much who he is, but deep down inside, it's like how this man can get away with this, but like how this guy could just come up with this plan and you know follow these people and just kill them and not show any remorse, right? I, I think that's what it all boils down to, just this deep-rooted obsession that we have. And that, that that's the beauty of this movie. It's not just an American thing, right? It's it's a human thing, right? We all want to know, wow, how does this guy get away with this way? Like, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, trying to yeah, get go into on, the psyche. No, I was just saying, you're just trying to get into the psyche of this person because it's like, you know, you're sitting in your own little world and you would be like, I would never... Um, but there is somebody out there who is actively doing it and seems to be, you know, rubbing his thumb in everybody's face and, you know, with it. So there's that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also I forgot to mention, too, he leaves, um, well, in this case, part of a cipher. Um, he sends the other two or three parts, I believe it is, right. to two other um, newspaper um, companies, basically, right? And, he, well, he says, basically, in the note that if you don't print them literally on the same day, on the front, he, yeah, on the front page, he's going to kill people, like, on the right. weekend off, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, they actually play ball, and then afterwards, and this is one thing that this show does very, 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 very well, though, how it spans time, though, like, literally. Yeah. Literally, what? a new what? scene is like a new day. Like, oh, I mean, I mean, like two weeks later, two days later, two years later, right? Yeah, it right. spans time so so effortlessly, do it. I mean, and it never it never comes off like a gimmick. It never right. comes off as boring. It never comes off as contrived. It feels like no, this is a real like a a, a huge event that you're seeing yeah. here. This what? didn't what? happen over the course of a month or 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 you know a year. This was this, this spanned years, you know, you know. Right. What, what I liked about it is is how you know these serial killer, killer types they're not that smart because what they, they yes. totally rely mm-hmm. on is is the shock and awe of the whole thing, right? And because like when they boil it down, it's like oh no, the cipher like real basic and simple. And mm-hmm. once you do a little bit of research and digging up on them, you could sort it out relatively simply of where he coming from and where he doing and why. And the majority of the reasons why a lot of cases don't get solved is because the sheer bureaucracy and weight and bullshit about everything this distracting you. Mm-hmm. And it's pure nonsense that, yeah, especially like, um, we call him Mark Ruffalo's character, like, you're all feel bad for here because, like, yeah, boy, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I'm sure they could have solved these cases because they, they had all the evidence, like, everything that that the book was about ultimately. Well, remember, you eventually wrote the book. It's like, yeah, most of this was they already had, they covered most of this, but they can't do it because a judge said no, and they couldn't do this because yeah, they somebody have didn't have a fax machine on one, and somebody, yes, something. yeah, boy, somebody, yeah, somebody <laughs> fucked this up. And, and, you know, it's a lot of a lot of it is, is straight up um Fifth Amendment stuff and the law itself and you know a person can't do this, that, or the other and blah 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 blah. blah. And yeah, that's why they get into that. I, I like how they do that with this now. And because another thing too, well, there's something that they don't talk about in this, but a lot of another reason too is that the police is just focus on a lot of bullshit. They kind of they kind of hit um they kind of hint up on it, which is uh, a lot of police racism. Like there's always just assume as a black person do it. So they, Ooh, I'm not gonna touch so, on that. So buddy. yeah, a lot of like a lot of serial killers get away with shit. Like I forget which one it was that somebody in California who straight up said you would catch me sooner if it wasn't racist. Like he straight up said that. Like outright said. I forget wow. which one it is. And he was like, yeah, you're yeah, <laughs> yeah, assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You assume you assume some black guy did it. That kind of thing. They barely touch upon it at the beginning because this is where in where in Chicago, I think. Yeah, uh, it was it was after the Zodiac killer got into the cab and he shot right, down the cabbie right, and everybody right. just thought it was a black guy who did it. Right, yes, exactly. Yes, right. Yes. Stuff like that. Uh, but they just assume that and it's like, oh well, well everybody go believe him. And the, the, all of the, all of this little this stuff. And what I like about it, the, the, the well, we, we, when we get into the other film, they, they get into the quote unquote Keystone Cops aspect of this. Of one of the big things with Hollywood, there's a kind of open secret to Hollywood, right? Hollywood have to always make the police look competent, right? They could look, they could be evil. But it'll always be competent. But you'll never frame the police as incompetent. And I love how this film framed the police as incompetent. Like mm-hmm. they're kind of just fucking dumb. Like, sorry, like, you know, it wants to take you know, it's kind of ridiculous that a newspaper cartoonist was catching up on this and making sense of it because you know, sorry. 
He yeah, because he loves us. And he just, he just upsets about it. But the simple fact is that, look, it have too many cases and the justice system flooded with bullshit. And, you know, the, um, Mark Ruffalo character is like, yeah, look how much people dead in the time between the case things. Like, look, it's other people. We got to get on. We got to move on. It's about other stuff. Sorry to exactly. say. Exactly. It's, yeah. just, it's just simple things like that. But they make it work in that sense. I like how they film. Mm-hmm. They just frames it really well in that conceit. Um, yes, yes. Of, of, you know, the, the, the justice system just too flooded with nonsense that the police have too much bullshit to do instead of actually solving crimes. Because one of the big things about, you know, the police thing is that, we, the, the, you know, the United States is over police, but it's under detectivized, right? That's the most, like, one of the big important things about that. A lot of cases just don't get solved. And a simple case, if you were to sit down and work it out, you know. Um, this is just a, a, a extravagant example in history, but just just dig up. It has so many stories like that now. Um, of people just getting away with murder, literally, because the system sucks. And, you know, the system could be avoided if you don't waste your time with a sort of garbage, no? and wasting time mm-hmm. on, on a sort of crap. No? But yeah, I, I like how he, he, he actually makes the police look incompetent in this. I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, indeed, yeah. Um, also, well, right afterwards is actually a great moment. Um, actually really, really tense and slightly disturbing when you think about it, though, where you see the Zodiac Killer in broad daylight, right? Because yeah. he attacks this, this couple at this public park, though. You actually see him, lying with, you know, yeah. the, you know, it's just lying down, just chilling, even yeah. having a picnic or nothing, right? But yeah, um, you, you see him in the Zodiac costume, I'll call. So he has this mask. Right, right, right. Gone, yeah. you know, dark clothing. You see the yeah. Zodiac, well, it, I'll call this gun sight logo, basically, that he has on right. the shirt as well, too. Um, but but what makes it seem you know so disturbing as well too, is how you know just just how it's all paced. It just takes his time. He shows up with a gun. He tells them you know he well he ties he ties um he ties the woman's hands behind her back and then well he kind of forces the, the the man to do the same thing and then tells them to lie down. He says that he will take the car and whatnot. And then he just like starts stabbing them in the back to like just so you know what I mean. And then the next scene, literally, he calls the police and say, "Yeah, um, you know, I've double murder, blah 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 blah." And then, well, you know, the guy actually survives. I'm like, wow, okay, you know. But that that scene, especially the way how it was paced, to yeah, that 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 was easily one of the most intense scenes in the movie. Um, even though what? it's not really like gory or brutal per se. What I liked about that in that particular sequence is is the shift from just a relative calm, because the scene of itself stays stays calm, the music of itself does what it needs to do. But the interaction between the couple, because he's there droning on about, you know, some secret about the lake, and she has been there before, and that kind of thing. So they're trying to kind of, for me, it was kind of like, you could see like they're trying to reconnect, they're trying to have a, a, a nice moment. And here he comes behind the tree and just shows up and then shows up. And from the time you see him hog tying them, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting down watching this thing and I'm seeing him hog tying them. And I'm like, this is not going to end well. We all know this is not going to end well. But the stabby, stabby, stabby sense of it and just having that drawn out completely. Now I sat down there and I looked at it and I'm like, shit. So, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a moment literally where where you cringe, but like, jeez, you know what I mean? Um, I forgot to I mention too. I, 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 I just, I just like how the um how the guy was just really trying to get out of this, like, yeah, oh, like, yeah. Like, like you like, know, look, here, here's the keys. Like, here's the keys. Here's the keys. Them. Take my wallet. Take whatever you want. Just don't hurt. I us. can write you a check. I'm like, oh, so what? I mean, okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, see, see, just how far that goes, right? But yeah, one thing that this film um, establishes early off though is how incredibly smart Robert is though, because um, like with the first cipher, he's like interpreted it, trying to figure out the anagrams and whatnot. He doesn't solve it per se, right? But he he does immediately start to figure it out. Though, I like how like at first you know Paul kind of watch him like, dude, like, all right, like I told you, it's just a cartoonist though. What are you doing with cipher books and all that kind of thing there. But also what they notice, well, this is a great scene in, um, um, that follows right after that um, that murder be in the park, right? Where he he remembers there's there's a there's a phrase that um that the Zodiac mentions in one of his notes where he says man is the most dangerous animal of them all of of mm-hmm. all sir, right? And he remembers mm-hmm. it's from a horror film called the most dangerous game. And you know what I like about this movie is that you think, oh, it's just some kind of random point that they just bring up, like, oh, this is how he remembers this. But it's brought up later on in the film, and that actually caught me completely by surprise, too. But yeah, if I got like Robert to just be like, oh, I remember that, and then he pulls his book out, and he's showing this sort of, like, weird vampire film or whatever it is. I love Paul's reaction. It's like, oh, what, what's his name? And he calls some kind of weird name, like, Orlac or some kind of thing. Like, you could tell Paul's just like, 
okay, like, all right, this this is kind of weird. You know, they are real nonchalant about it. That that's that's Robert Downey Jr.'s character, by the way. But I just love that about Robert. Like he just always thinking, right? Yeah, that um, to me kind of felt yeah. like um like you know when. Uh, and this is completely random, but it's like being in a room where you're the comic person, the comic book person, and you have matched something comic book wise to something that's happening in reality and how the quote unquote normals look at you. That for me was that entire scene when he went and he ran and he grabbed that book and stuff like that. It's 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 not movie related, but that is kind of like what it reminded me of. It's like there's the nerd who knows things that the normals may or may not necessarily know. And it's like how they looked at him and their interaction with him, trying to figure right. out if he's all right, you know, well, if that, he has, you know, some kind of issue. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I like about it too, is that it gets into the, and it's something that you see across the board. You're only seeing it now because we have so many of these school shooters and these incel types. But yeah, that's the, nerdy, the nerdiness of the whole thing. You know, they, a lot of these guys tend to, they, they get the inspiration from some movie or some video game or some bullshit like that. Um, yeah, you know, sorry. Yeah. Um, but that that part. Oh, well, of sorry like, for the video game stuff. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever now, like whatever. Like it's always, always, always something, right? There's always something in pop culture. They they tend to be pop culture nerds. They tend to be people who, which which makes sense because it fills the gap of of um, companionship now. It's just the sheer loneliness of a, a lot of that drive a lot of this now. Um, and they make that work really well because if anybody remember the movie The Cable Guy. Right, oh, yes. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, that psycho, right? That, that guy, right? Yeah, boy. Um, oh, anyway, that could totally use a remake in, in modern internet stuff, eh? totally, but whatever. Yeah, uh, well, well, remember we had that Super Bowl ad, right? We, right, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. I, was, I was like, you know, they can bring this back anyway. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's just that it, it have a lot of people like that where it's just a pop culture thing, you know, will fill the gap, and I they use that as the driving impetus. And if it wasn't for X, Y, and Z, you know, is, is a warning sign for if you're real into pop culture and you're not, you know, you don't, um, you don't do anything in your life, you can easily see yourself becoming these weirdos now. Uh, that's a big, big, like, you know, red flag. And I like that it gets into that aspect of it. It's like, yeah, the whole thing was this old movie. Like, yeah, like it that. was from, from that. what was from, um, an RKO picture from like 1992 exactly. or something like that, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so let me just talk briefly about just David Fincher himself, boy. Um, just some fantastic establishing shots and sequences, way. Um, case in point, dude, that taxi cab sequence. Oh my god, dread. Like the camera is literally turn. following him over or following mm-hmm. that, that taxi cab overhead. Eh? And there's a moment where the taxi legit turns a corner and the camera tilts her. Eh? Now, I watched that dread. I was wondering if because it can't be no helicopter shot. No, I know it was a helicopter, right? But the way how it's framed, you, you, you're probably thinking, oh, maybe some helicopter should have want that, right? But there's that camera tilt. Nah, it wouldn't have been that smooth, right? But yeah. uh, I know that there was some VFX involved with this, though, but just that turn in particular, though, I was just like, I was just in amusement, dude. It just looks so smooth and so seamless, but... Um, and yeah, I mean, just that that sequence alone was fantastic, boy. And even better now is that, well, yeah, you know, we the guy who is the passenger in the back seat of that car now was the Zodiac, right? Because right as they reach his destination, now Bam. he just kill the driver. He just shoot him in the back yeah. of the head, and it's like, yeah. wait, like what? You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> like how after, like like at that moment though, when he when he steps out the vehicle, right? You know, he, he's doing a little stuff as well that you know, Lily Tone, you know what I mean? He had gloves on and he was trying to, you know, do stuff, you know, like hide evidence and whatnot, right? You Instead of hearing the Zodiac call the police and say, hey, I did this, you hear a woman, right? And then you learn she was actually on the uh, opposite side of the street now, seeing, uh, reporting a fight that takes place. Oh, there's right. a fight, and, you know, this, this the driver was fighting with the pastor and whatnot, right? But yeah, guys, was it a woman what, or what's your. Kids? It's kids. It's kids. Yeah, it's kids. It was the yeah. kids. Yeah, the kids who saw it, but the woman, the, the mother, basically um, recalled. Right? Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, guys, what 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 were your thoughts on just that that sequence, that that tax cab sequence? Just great filmmaking around the board. Does I mean that's that's Fincher, isn't it? I mean when you when you see his other works like Gone Girl, it's like meticulous uh, uh, blocking and just great camera work. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, Ricardo, anything? Because, yeah, dog, no, tell, tell me the scene blew you away, Tell, tell not, me that. Not, uh, not really. I mean, I, I, see, <laughs> I, see, I, see, I see other versions of it done better, so whatever. I mean, I, I didn't think about it. Like, it's, it's just a scene. Like, it, like I don't, I like, look, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's film channel. Uh, but I, I just look at other stuff other than this, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good scene, but it didn't shock me or anything like that. Um, 
the, the part again the part of it that stuck stuck out to me was the, the race angle of it that was that i think yes, that was, yes. which, 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 which i'm actually gonna bring up now right right because um, yeah, yeah finally have, so go on no i just said I, ha- I had something scribbled in my notes that says san francisco or gotham that whole idea you were talking about in terms of the cinematography and the um the trailing of the taxi cab from overhead because you've seen those shots in a few other um, Gotham related projects. So that was my little, that was my little chuckle on that. And then in terms of, you know, you see the taxi driver slow down, but I really wasn't expecting to see, you know, his carotid artery go, you know, cuss plow all over the place. And that was a whole moment. Yeah, it was, it was, right? So, so one, fine. Se- one, se- one well, scene that, one scene that shocked me, uh, with the Zodiac murders was when he was actually tailing this woman on the highway. Right. And like, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. we get to that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baby, yeah. Yeah. Um, that part right. shocked me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it did. It did me, too, actually, right? <clears throat> so, finally, Mark Ruffalo, you know, a.k.a. I'm Always Angry, you know, shows up into the picture, right? Um, he plays SCPD Inspector Dave Tusky. If I got the name right. wrong, forgive me, right? Uh, you know, I just love how it's, uh, you know, how he... There's this running gag where he's always woken up from sleep and, you know, his wife always tell him, you know, just go right to the job, right? But I like the that, an, you know. An, the animal crackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you, you, got any, you got any more animal crackers, right? Which, but I'm assume, ironic, which, which I'm assuming he munches on because he's a former smoker. Right. Right, yeah, yeah. Could be, could be, could be, right? But I love the, the irony where, you know, just bringing up the Reese, the Reese angle now, finally. Uh, yeah, the suspect in this so-called robbery is a Negro male adult, right? <laughs> and then by the time he showed up, it was like, well, yeah, there was an error on the, on the department's part, right? Like, it was actually a white male. Wow. Like, really? Really, right? Huh. Think about that, right? Right. So I like how, and for me, like, I, I think that Dave is partly the comic relief in this movie though because like his reactions is to, to things like especially how he responds to things i thought were, were, were just spot on though i, I love like the moment where uh, his, his partner jack shows up right and jack say oh today's my birthday he's like all right cool well happy birthday right and then well jack asks uh, body or scene and dave says it's your birthday i'll take the body right. so just like little moments like that the little quips like that are really dug uh also when he interviews the um the children the, the kids of the of the woman who reported the um the, the the crime basically and one of the kids say well this girl says um you know this this guy ran out and how he looked like he looked normal he's like normal and the scene stops here just those little things are, are, are really like as well right um but yeah um so cut to some days later now and the chronicle gets another um note from from the from the zodiac right this is one thing he does he's always <clears throat> he's always sending these notes to them right but in this case now he takes this piece of the, the fabric like the, the, the shirt that the cab driver had and the stain in blood right and puts it into the um into the note and sends it to them right but is the note that is in is what he says in the any letter do that that's really creepy where he talks about how um you know he, he threatens to shoot the tire of the school bus and pick off kids as they run out you know what i mean and instantaneously, I was reminded of, you know, that climactic scene in Dirty Harry, right? And I love that the movie brought up that movie, uh, brought right. up that film as well, too, right. later on. I was like, yes, round of applause, picture. Exactly. You that, know what you're talking about. Yes, exactly. I love that. That's, that's all I like about it. You get into that, that whole aspect of pop culture feeding back into reality. And, you know, these unstable individuals. Yeah, yeah. They, they're getting taller. It's like, oh, yeah, you probably just copy some shit and see from a movie. Like, yeah, this is that's actually happened apparently. But no, well, well, remember that movie was in that that came out two years from the events. Well, where this film starts off to her, right? Yeah. So yeah, and and th- this was another thing I was thinking about too while I was watching this before they even brought up the the area. It's just how like all right, well, and you know if if remember that story was set in San Francisco, right? Okay. It's just that okay, there's a guy who's going around killing people. He hasn't been found as yet. But hey, let me just make a movie about this this hard nosed cop, right? Who's hunting me, hunting him down, and instead of the Zodiac killer, we'll call him the Scorpio killer, right? It's not right. like anybody gonna know the difference, right? Yeah. I mean, I love Duty Harry. I love that film. Is is the best of the Duty Harry series. But yeah. just for them to say two years later after that fact, yeah, let me make a movie about it, no? You know? Yeah, yeah just feeding, you know, real life feeding back, back and forth. You know, art imitates life, life imitates art, and all that bullshit. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly, right. So there, and what what the show kneels well, uh, um, kneels as well is the identity of the Zodiac. We have no clue who he is, right? Um, and it always keeps us guessing, right? Case in point, there's a moment where the guy, this well, someone who claims to be the Zodiac, right, is calling the police. He's saying that he wants to he he, he wants to call at this uh, morning talk show, right? I think it's right. Jim Dunbar, right? And he wants this guy called Melvin Capelli. I believe that's a sorry, not, not sorry, Belly. Melvin Belly, Melvin Belly to Belly. shoot, um, to, to 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 talk to, right? Um, I didn't know this, right? But because I'm still catching up on the you know TOS, right? But apparently, he appeared in Star Trek, he played the character right. of Gorgon. Um, right. yeah. I, I just found out the fact that it was in season three, right? So maybe Ricardo, you could fill me in on yeah, the yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember the character, I was like, oh, yeah, right, yeah, he was in this, yeah, so. Really creepy scene you now where he actually calls the show, right? And he's talking about how he's experiencing all these headaches. And there's a moment where he screams and he's like, ah, and it's like, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't deal with this anymore. I gotta go and kill someone. I'm gonna kill these kids. And then he hangs up, right? But then he calls back afterwards and says, you know what? Um, I'm gonna meet you at this um, thrift store, which shows back up actually in the film. It actually shows back up, right? And then by the time like he shows up now, he's not there. And then the police find out, oh, he's actually a mental patient that just somehow escaped at this, you know, made this call, you know what I mean? So this love how, you know, Fincher was just brave enough to always, like, you know, just dupe the audience. Like, because, yeah, I mean, legit me, I was thinking, oh, this is the real guy. And then you realize, well, no, it's not him, right? But yeah, any thoughts on on just, you know, that, that moment? How idiotic the police were. Oh, yeah, 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 they, they would, they would. Even yeah. right down to um, having to tell Mike, to tell the guy, no, we're not recording you. We're not, we, this, I mean, we're not recording the call. No. Obvious. No. <laughs> and as soon as they get the location, they all speed to the location. It's like, oh, yeah. That was yeah. so stupid. Like, yeah. it's just... <laughs> and you saw, you noticed <laughs> that one um, helicopter that showed up. Though, um, at first, I was wondering if it was a news chopper, but before we do, it's probably the police as well. Eh? But I was like, oh my God, all these people show up. Jen is like, they wanted Melvin, right? But yeah, the incompetence of the cops in this movie, right? Um, so yeah, cut to 1970 now. Now we get that moment where uh, a- a- another unsettling scene, right? This woman just driving down the road and she have a baby with her. This man honking at her, tell her, oh, something's off with one of your, one of your tires, right? He fixes it. She dries off now. The, 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 the tire comes off now. And then the Zodiac, sh- uh, well, who you assume is the Zodiac killer, shows up, dread, offers to take her to this gas station, right? And, you know, points for not showing the guy's face, right? right. Um, but then the scene ends now where, yeah, she's in the car now. And then, well, he just looks at her and tells her, before, before I, I kill, kill you, I kill I'm going to throw your baby, baby out, out the window. window. Yeah, yeah. And you see just feet a black shirt. I like Jesus Christ, boy. But then the next scene comes in, and you see her just on the uh, on the on the road, just this shovel now. And then, well, this guy shows up, and you want to know what happened, and say, well, I jumped out the car now. But all right, you jump out the, the car, baby. so instantly you want to wipe the kid. Yeah, well, basically she just she just hit, hit hit the child in you know this grass off the road itself. I was just back. like, yeah, in case well, you came back. I was just like, that, that, that was the only thing that was on, on, really on clear to me. Because again, I, I never read the book. So, uh, how did she get out with the baby? That I can follow that. That's a good question. You know what yeah, I mean? Um, yeah, that's a real good question. But yeah, well, well, I mean, I, I, I was glad that, that I was glad that she was okay, boy. But geez, that build up though was right. Huh. Yeah. Even though it's it's a fake out, so to speak, though. But right. yeah, that was yeah. an intense. But I see that, that that is one problem with the Zodiac killer thing is that like you're not sure if that story was he really? wasn't necessarily the Zodiac no. Like it could just be another guy, or like you don't know. Like the way that's the sad part about this whole thing. Like, look, um, you know, um, what's his name, Robert? Uh, you know, the, the author, right? Smith. Yeah, yeah. He, you're not sure how clear he was on the narrative of all, all, all of this, right? Unfortunately, because he was like out of the loop for, for a lot of it. He was now police officer. He was just trying to write the book. We're not sure what happened between the time of him starting to write the book and then when the book was finally out. Um, you know, that's the thing. They still, they still keep a lot of this unclear. But from from for the sake of the movie, a lot of it works. To be honest, so, like whatever. Yeah, it does, it does, right? There's so a lot of unreliable to, narration going back and forth. That's that my point. Yeah, yeah. So cut to 1971 now, because, yeah, again, the show is is is, cover, is spanning years. Eh? Yeah. So Dave has this, you're right, has this lead on this guy. He works at this refinery um, by the name of Arthur Lee Allen, right, who's played by John Carroll Lynch, right, uh, who may be Zodiac, who may be the Zodiac right, killer, right? Because right? yeah, yeah. one of his friends I mean, saw him. It. 
The fr- yeah, the fr- I, I, the fr- I, I, the film, the film, the film yeah, the film frames him as as by far the most likely candidate for the check. Yes. And to be fair, a lot of the evidence does line up with him, but is there's a lot of evidence as to why not? Like, you know, once you read up his right. backstory, it's like oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but but how they how they stumble on it because uh, one of his friends, well, former co-workers, I think, notice him. You know, um, right, taking out, putting out, sorry, taking out or putting in these bloody knives now. You know, right. but then like they have this this interview and he says, well, you know, it was I was cutting up some chicken, right, right. and whatnot, right? right. Random but, excuse, <laughs> yeah, r- random excuse, right? Like you ain't gonna wash them like, knife or nothing, <laughs> you know? And and it's like every time he talking, you know, it's just like. No, it's you because he mentioned about how the most dangerous game is his most favorite book in right, high school, right? Right. right, right yeah. Uh, and you, you know, know he's wearing right, a Zodiac right, watch that, because but, right. So there's there's another there's another reason why the, the film works because it 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 plays on that movie logic versus real life of you know subtext and 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 overtext and overtones in a movie. Yes, that makes sense. You have things like foreshadowing. Real life has no foreshadowing, and I like how they play with that. Like, yeah. Right. Fincher just play with that in that way. It's like, yeah, in a in a real mo- in a movie, he would be the guy because you know film language and visual language says so, storytelling says so. But no, mm-hmm. it, that doesn't have to be the case at all. Let's be clear. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because that's what I like about it. It feeds back into the, the non-reality of the whole thing. Um, that that kind of weird hyper reality that we live in. in um, with that now, Fincher really t- takes that into account. That's why I enjoy. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Um, also, there's a moment earlier on where um, Paul mentions to Robert, hey, Zodiac is actually a brand watch, brand name of right. a watch, basically, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And in the interview, Art is wearing a, a Zodiac watch. It's like, oh, shit, mm-hmm. it had to be you, right? And right. then there's this thing going on that they mentioned that he was ambidextrous as well. And right. like his friend, well, actually, either his friend or his brother, right, uh, mentions that he is as well, too. But they also bring up a point now that he used to work at um, this, um, this school, basically, but he was fired because of molestation charges yeah he was a oh, yeah. pedophile right so it's like yeah it had to be you it had to be you had right be, yeah, yeah. right so you know um they, 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 yeah and actually like a year later on they get more evidence that, like, that, right, that, that scene that scene is very proto mind hunter like you know the interview in the device yes. I, I love what they do with that because he's just greek he's like legit medicine that and creepy as hell eh? the thing oh, is he like was, he was yeah, for that, me, that's that, like, that, that's like that's that's like but uh, whatever, it's fine. Like, you know, I expect something like that from like at the time period, so whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you kind of play it, kind of play it as kind of subtly where you know, the show he crosses legs and stuff like that. Yes, I forgot yeah, about yeah, that too. Yes, like that. he does, yeah, he does and, do a leg like, crossing uh, as well, too. You're right. They call mm-hmm. him Robert Downey Jr.'s character with oh. his uh, possible, possible, possible leader homosexual. You know, they had to bring that yes. one. Yeah. But the yeah, 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 moment, yeah, yeah. a moment, yeah. guys, where he um he writes this in the article, and then well, the Zodiac come back at him like uh, with with the same bloody fabric in the cloth, though. And it's right. it's, it's, it's Robert Downey's reaction to the, he's like, oh yeah. shit, fuck, yes, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it's it's, 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 I forgot to mention too. There's a great gag that comes afterwards where um you know everybody else in the news will see in. Oh well, my I am not Paul Avery, so they had these buttons. I am not Paul, right? Or I am not I am not Avery, right? right. Uh, they, they say basically, so if he's Zodiac looking for him, can they take it that he he going to kill Paul specifically? Right. Right. So right. everybody who any buttons will be will be will be um, spared now, right? But then you see, even like Robert and all have have a button on. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because right, yeah. yeah, we could sell these. Yeah, we could sell. Yeah. But yeah, um, cut to to a year later on the really and. The police get more evidence, and it's your warrant, right? And this is sort of, but again, you know, me going back to what you say, Ricardo, you know, with the film world and the real world, right? When they go into his, when the police go into his um trailer, um, y- yeah, you're instantly thinking, oh, he's a guy because he's seeing yep. like squir- dead squirrels, dead squir- yeah, the, the squirrels, yeah, over the open apartment. fridge, and you see the squirrels inside. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there's uh, the black gloves, there's guns in there, right? And then, Thanks yeah, so homeboy man. shows up afterwards and they arrest him. And then, well, afterwards, yeah, they, they, um, they, they let him go because, yeah, the yep. ballistic don't match up. Prince right in. Prince don't match up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 even, yeah. Yeah, even, even the army does just stop. Don't yeah. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. But afterwards, there's a great moment, one of the best scenes in this film, right? Where you, 
Dave is frustrated at this point, right? Because yeah. he was so dead bent on on on, on you know arresting Artena. Because again, it's not just you know um, Robert who's obsessed about this thing, but Dave as well. He wants to bring this guy down. Uh, Paul, not so much, right? But really, Robert and Dave, right? And the show wisely frames them as the main characters anyway in this right. film, right? But yeah, I love that you know the 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 super the superiors telling Dave, yo, just take a break, go see a movie, right? And what is he going to see? Dirty Harry, right? Yeah. Well played, Fincher. Well played, right? I love how there's a moment where uh where he comes in now as that scene where they get the first letter from the Scorpio killer. And you could see Dave just kind of watch this thing with his wife now. And just like y- you could tell he just not liking this, right? He walks out, right? right. But is right afterwards, I I think it's, it's a great little moment here where you see Robert and well his new girlfriend, Melanie, who's played by Chloe, right? They're there watching the same film as well, right? But there's a shot though where they get to the moment and well, of course you're not seeing the screen, but you hear the 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 um the sound off screen, right? The infamous um school bus scene. This is where the, the, the Scorpio killer goes on um enters the school bus right near the end of the film, right? And you see just a few seconds of of uh of Robert just kinda twitching in his seat because it upsets him right because um that moment uh, when he's zodiac talk about how he was going to be killing you know school kids it's a great moment where you saw just how concerned he was for his son right so yeah seeing him in the cinema and that moment now and how he twitched that was great but it cuts right afterwards where he walks outside and you know he tells um he tells he tells um dave oh they they, they, they shot the killer in the chest right but what they think about it is like, no, well, Robert stuck through the entirety of the film there. He didn't walk out the moment he saw the school bus scene, you know what I mean? But just that, though, in terms of just expectations, in terms of how characters should react to the Zodiac killer and seeing a version of him on screen with this movie, I thought was fantastic, though. That was just a brilliant, flawless moment, in my opinion. Um, and then we just get this great little sound montage, just this odd audio, uh, audio montage, basically, where we're hearing top 10 hits, but we're also hearing news reports. We're hearing about, um, uh, we're hearing about, um, what that's so much Watergate, right? You're hearing about, um, Chairman Mao, you're hearing about Hoffa's disappearance, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And all the news stuff, yeah, right. yeah, all the news stuff, right? And you're hearing all these, these top 10 hits, you're hearing some disco stuff here, there, right? And there's 1977, right? So I was just blown away the whole so much years this movie covering, right? Yeah. Um, and, I'll bring this up near the end too, right? Where they they they, they try to make um Jake look older, so he has stubble on his face. So I guess that counts as him being older, right? But whatever, right? Um, but we learned that that Paul left, right? Because yeah. earlier on they established that he was an alcoholic, yep. so the, the the boss didn't, didn't was having none of that. So he fired him, and um this guy replaced him by um Adam Goldberg. I'm like what you were this too? Like shit. Like okay, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, even um Jack, who's Dave's partner and all too. He leaves like he 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 puts it a transfer to to fraud now because like yo we 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 in this case for years or like yeah, well, five much, yeah. years nothing coming out of it right because it's really at this point there's been no killings at this point in time right but um and and something I forgot about this movie here Robert however he is still obsessed over this though like Dave is as well too he just wants to bring the son of a bitch down right but Robert is just like flat out obsessed though but it makes sense given the the character that he is because yeah he feels like yeah you know the cops slip up they they probably miss some facts so from this point on you are just following robert now as he's going back to um you know to to the to the police department trying to get you know trying to acquire evidence there you know i mean notes and all that kind of stuff right um he even runs into dave as well too and they have like a nice little chat and whatnot right and Dave feeds him a little information as to who to go by and all right. that kind of stuff right but it's just seeing robert just really go deep do this deep dive now this montage where he's just pulling up all cases and all that kind of stuff and you're just like wow like again this is this is pre um this is this is pre nightcrawler where right? there's that obsession right. in terms of you know just uncovering this truth of this killer though i i, I love that in terms of, of of character development um i don't know if you guys have anything to weigh on robert's you know change in the film well, for me it was I just find it weird that his wife got with him just because he was a reporter investigating the Zodiac. 
Right. Yes, yes, I forgot to mention too. So the, the night of the first date was when Paul, you know, was meeting with some informant and he was concerned that Paul was gonna get killed by the by the Zodiac there because of the, the, the stuff that he print um on you know with the homosexual stuff there. And yeah, like he, he, he goes home and she 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 tags along and he's just there with only forward and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy, but yeah, for her to just stick with him through all this boy is is amazing. Even though um, it it makes sense that eventually she she would leave him, you know, right. at this point because like yo is like you don't even care about the family anymore. You just like real obsessed over this shit, right? Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, anything else you wanna win? Yeah, no, their their relationship evolves in an interesting way. Um, in that sense, now of of him being obsessed, but but the, the fact that he just he seems to be taking these risks and it's almost as if he he deliberately trying to fish out the Zodiac killer to come after him. It's almost like that now. Like he keep making these incredibly like putting himself on TV and putting his face out there and putting his in a in an article because the Zodiac killer is also is also pretty obsessive and will track him down. Like the, the way the, the film again, if it, because you know real life didn't play out like that, but the film frames it as if well, you know, you're gonna confront him eventually in that sense. Um, and they eventually do that kind of. Yes, yes, um, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Right. Which which I'm gonna get to, right? right? So yeah. um, while all this is going, right, he actually gets a call from this anonymous source, right? This this anonymous person, right? Um, he says, well, you know, I know the identity of of the killer, right? His name is um his, his name is just read it off here, uh, Rick Marshall, right? Right. Um, and his friend, the Zodiac's friend, um, Bob Vaughn, actually used to work at this old cinema, basically, right? And Rick actually had him um, keep this film canister because apparently he used to, you know, film his, you know, his murders basically, right? Um, and eventually he does meet with Bob, right? And this is where we get the moment, um, again, one of the creepiest moments in the film, right? Where he takes him to his house basically on this rainy night, right? And while I'm watching this, Jared, I was, I was get, uh, it was, it was just evoking, um, you know, prisoners, right? Which um, also, right. which featured. Right. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Paul Dano, who appears in the Batman, right? But just you know, this 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 um creepy looking guy, you know what I mean? Like, this the sharpest looking, looking individual. Head. Yes, it, it does as well too, especially with yeah. the beast scene. I love how how Robert says, um, you know, um, not that many people have beast beds in San Francisco, right? But you do, right? Right. But yeah, but the guy, you know, is talking about, oh well, you know, he, um, you know, Rick used to work with me and all that kind of stuff, and then, um, and then Robert shows him, you know, some some evidence that they had there where he, you know, because the killer was doing some drawings as well too. And he says, well, no, well, I did the drawings as well, and you know, um, Robert is disappointed, right? And he's like, well, it's, yeah, well, best I go, but you know, the guy's like, wait, wait, hold on, right? I want to show you something in the beast bed. I want to show you, you know, the the, the castles and whatnot, right? Even though he told him that he gave back the castle, right? And that's when, like, you know, you as as a viewer is just like, oh shit, this guy is a killer. Why is he moving this creepy? Why is he taking him into into this beast bed, right? You know, but I don't want to go, go in the into, base, Don't go in the basement, dude. Yeah, don't go into the beast bed, right? But I don't want to go into full details as to what happens, though. But I would say in terms of just um you know tension that's how it builds the tension yeah it it does keep you on your toes but the cinematography um is you know appropriately you know like dimly lit and all that kind of stuff and this is the way how they make um bob look at the scene though is just straight up creepy dread so yeah you're not surprised at the end of the day at, at the end of it all when robert just like legit runs nice. up and just storms outside the house right <laughs> you, you don't blame him like the guy is legit scared though but yeah that that scene is is fantastic as well though i don't know if guys have any, have any take away on that whole bob robert Interaction scene there. Just bra- back break tension, dude. He's <laughs> oh, like running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When he, goes, when he goes running and he reaches to the door and he's he's trying to, to get out and then dude comes up to the to the door and just kind of like unlocks it for him. Like you really thought, like if this was a different kind of movie, this is the point there where you know right. somebody gets stabbed. Right, exactly. Um, right. You know, and between him already wet from the from the from the rain and you can sense his own sweat and his own. Um, fear and just running out like a mad person into his into his car. Good night, Mister. You know whatever his name is. Um, that for me was a whole heights on itself, but it did give me real Silence of the Lambs kind of vibe for it. Yeah, it, it does, especially at that moment with um. Yeah, you remember when Judy Foster was investigated, Bill, and you know Bill had the goggles, right? You know, you, right. you remember that scene, right? You love that scene, right? Yeah, I oh, um, yeah. also forgot to mention too during that that cover between Robert and Bob, he brings up the most dangerous game that was the right. movie that was playing. But then you learn earlier on that um, it was played actually in you know around the time when the first Zodiac murder murder sorry took place, right? 
that it was screening at a point in time when before the murder, before that first murder, sorry, t- took place, right? But yeah, um, so while all this is going on, I mean, Robert's obsession just reached his fever fever point, right? Um, to the point that, yeah, Melanie, like, leaves him at home, basically, right, to solve this case, right? Um, and he even, like, you know, gets more information. He runs into a friend of Darlene, if you remember, Darlene was the one who got killed at the beginning of the film, right? And then she brings up this guy that that um, was looking creepy that he had met during some party or something like that. And then, um, well, she says the name, it was Arthur, or oh, sorry, well, she brings up the name Lee. It's like, Lee. oh, it's, uh, it's, it's it was Arthur then. Right. In our heads, we're thinking, it's Arthur all along, right? It's Arthur, right? Hey, right? So, um, and the birthday was the day that he, well, on the birthday right. itself, because it's a... This, it's this a, was the um, interesting part, where... Right, where, so there's a bit, made, basically, where um, he, yeah. he called uh, Melvin um, on his birthday, right? But right. Melvin was out, he, he he actually went on some African safari. Yeah, he gave that stuff. answer, right? And said, um, you say about how he had to kill, it was his birthday, right? Right. But, you know, because the guy wasn't there to respond... I don't think he did. Ki- he did kill anybody on that day, right? I don't think right. so. Yeah, because he was disappointed, and Melvin didn't reach out to him, right? But yeah, once those things come into place, now now the audience is thinking, yes, it is him. It is. It, it was Arthur all along, right? There's a great moment actually where you know now um, Robert is knocking on Dave's door, right? And again, Dave is sleeping, um, and, and you know he, he talks to him, and, he, and he just had it up to here with Wendy Roberts sleep. and his and his. Yeah, yeah, he he's had enough dread. Like they they literally drag his name through the press for various reasons as well too. But he's done, right? But you know he actually like sits down and listens to him. It's like yeah, yeah, you're making sense. You're making sense, right? But I love how <laughs> he just kind of ends it by saying, "Go finish that book," right? Because um, actually I forgot to mention there's a scene um in the late seventies though where he where Robert actually confronts Paul, right? Who um. Is you, you see him like living on this boat? He yeah. He could he he actually is revealed to have um some some illness. We actually it's revealed what the illness is near the end of the film, right? Right. Um, right. you know from from all the drinking and smoking and stuff that he was doing, and he brought up the idea of Paul writing this novel based on the Zodiac Killer. Right. He's like, well, nah, I, I don't really do this shit anymore, Jim. But you should do it because you know a lot too, right? And, and because and of the yeah. obsession. And so give a shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, right, I think, because, I think yeah, that's... At, at that point in time, Paul just stopped caring. He just right, yeah, he just kind of checked out. Completely. He, he just I, wanted I, to stay like, home and play I, pong, I, dread. Like, right, he was right, playing pong. <laughs> but I really liked um, I really liked that they get into the apathy of the whole thing. Like, this is the main reason why the stuff does just happen. And you, you know, only years later, we live in a generation that's super into social justice and fixing the past. Um, you have all of these cool cases being solved now. But yeah, back in that time, sorry, you had to life went life goes on. And, and it goes on like the man yeah, didn't yeah, kill yeah. for four years. You know what I mean? So, I, I like, and and I like, he didn't send any messages to, exactly. to the newspaper companies at all. So it's like, I, well, I, yeah, yeah. And I like that it gets into well, why it is that he's still doing this? And you know, yeah, you know, it it, it have the kind of nobody else will do it kind of mindset now, which I like. So I really like how they frame that conceit. I have no idea if that's the real story. No idea. Yeah, but, I I um, assume it, that let me just say ninety five percent of what we see in this movie is real, quote unquote, right? Right, right, right. So yeah. much, much to my surprise, I thought that this movie was just gonna stick in one decade. We cut to 1983 now, and yep. we see yep. Robert now going. I believe it's into the same thrift store that um that he had wanted that the Zodiac had wanted um Melvin to meet him at, right? And well, speaking of which, Arthur's working there now, right? And this okay. is where he brought up the thing with the the calendar because I think they had um the calendar was for 1980, but it was in yeah. 83, right? So yeah. he comes in and notices Arthur, right? Robert notices Arthur, right? And Arthur asks, can I help you, right? Then right. Robert says, no. Oh, and you see them just kind of watch each other. It's like, yeah, you could tell, yes. oh, I it's know I know yeah. what you're about. I know what you're, I know what you're about. Each person Expression knows what the other person is about, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. Robert leaves. I love that. That's just brilliant. You don't have to see anything, right? And then, again, much to my surprise, we, we just we just skip in um, years now. Cut to 1991 now, and the Zodiac novel is out. It's a bestseller. And also, is this is just a, a smart, but it's a logical choice um, in terms of the film now. Uh, we don't see the lead. We don't see the main characters at all, right? We don't see them. And when you think about it, it makes sense because, I mean, it's 1991, sure. Like, I mean, this this, this movie, you know, doesn't done cost a lot of money. Like, you all really need to go out all the way to, to add prosthetics to the face. So... Oh, this is how they look now in 1991. It's like, no, like, 
what we saw before that was their story but their story is over and this film is wrapping up so it makes sense not to have these main characters show up i know like you know in a traditional film you know you you, you kind of have to see them before the you know we cut to credit um to blackner but having them be excluded in this final sequence i think was a a, a brilliant choice right but yeah so now we we reached uh well jack himself right and he runs into well he actually um that runs into actually he actually has a meeting with uh michael mago right who's actually well the guy who survived the murder right. that we saw at the beginning yes, right at this yeah, airport yeah. in ontario right and it's in relation to what happened in 1969 when he got shot right Right. And I, I, I think I could be wrong with this, right? But this, you know, this is where Jack shows like these uh, photos, right? But this is like the first time you see this this technique used in the film. Now. So now I'm wondering, right. well, like this wasn't like present at all in the seventies, all right? Like maybe not, like because I I feel like if they had done this earlier on in the film, we we did, we just, the, the problem would have been solved. We could have found the killer one time, but it's like no, it's just all the ciphers and notes and all that kind of stuff, right? But whatever, right? So yeah, he just show a bunch of pictures like who yeah who's the guy who shot you and then well he point at Arthur's face right but yeah um, there's a signature on top so Arthur clearly changed his name or probably gave a false name right and it's like well yeah he's the guy who shot him back in sixty nine and that was it and the show ends there right but we get some closing text in the end so basically to say that um, the authorities were planning to meet with Arthur to discuss um, charged him for these zodiac murders right but he suffered a fatal heart attack wah, mm-hmm. wah, wah. Mm-hmm. too late right. Mm-hmm dumb cops um, <laughs> in 2004 uh, the San Francisco police deactivated the Zodiac investigation the case right. is still open at least at the time of this movie coming out though and they still say that Arthur is the prime and only subject, um, suspect right? I mean, right. Uh, I mean right yeah right um, as far as um, Paul you know Robert Dowdy's um, junior character go he you know died um, you know it was some MC, um, I think it's MC, he had or something, something along that line. I think it, it is he had, right? Um, David retired, you know, I mean, years ago. And well, Robert, according to the, uh, to the film, is it? enjoys, yeah, emphysema, that's what it is, sorry, right? Yeah. Um, Robert, you know, according to the film, enjoys a healthy relationship with his children, which kind of imply that, you know, maybe he's not with his wife. But then again, I don't know, right? I don't know. I don't know Robert Griswith. I don't know his backstory. I don't know what he's up to now or what that, right? And the film ends right there, right? So, um, in closing, um, as far as me ranking, you know, this film as far as, you know, um, Fincher's films, right? I'll put it like this. Uh, right. Fight Club is number one for me. Uh, Fight Club is number one for me, sorry. Um, seven is number two. I would still put stuff like uh, Gone Gill is, is number three for me. Um, and I would put Zodiac somewhere between four and five, right? Um, there's a there's another great film of his, it excuse me right now. Oh, right. I would kind of have this up above Panic Room. But because I haven't seen oh. Panic Room in a long while, Mm-mm. you know, I, I have it as a fourth. But I feel like if I watch Panic Room again, I might switch it, right? But yeah, this is definitely a top five as far as Fincher movies go, in my opinion, right? Um, not saying that all of his films are, you know, masterpieces, right? But I, you know, I make the argument. Same thing, like I said, with my seven review. After what happened with Alien Tree, boy, like after that, boy, if yeah. everything was just straight W's, you know, he has made <laughs> no L's, no yeah. L's. Every film he put everything he did, and all of it worked, right? Uh, I mean, there are a few films you might not like compared to others, right? But now, nah, when it comes to his filmography after Eden Tree, Street wins, right? And this is another shining example of that, man. It's not just in terms of recreating crime scenes, right? The, the meticulous detail, but also the era itself. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention, too, these moments uh, like where you see news programs and the way how it looks, like the, the, you know, the actual logo. It looks very 70s. The commercials that they use, like there's a slinky episode. Um, sorry, advertisement. There's a moment um, involving you know uh, Robert at home with his kids, and you're hearing Scooby Doo in the background, right? How ironic, right? Scooby Doo, ha, right? Um, just that attention to detail. But right? I know a lot of directors wouldn't even do that, but I felt like you know, um, you know, Fincher clearly wanted to to do the subject matter, you know, service, right? Justice, right? So yeah, it's just how he just recreates this will for us, right? Um, the decision to just have these events play out, like. Oh, two days later, three days later, one year later, two years later. I thought it was perfect as well, too. Okay, yeah, you're thinking that this thing was just like, you know, a few years, but no, this span decades, right? And you see that play out over the course of like, what, two hours and 40 minutes, right? Um, acting across the board, 
just just brilliant, right? From Jake General Hall to Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr., right? I was honestly thinking that Robert would have had more, you know, time in the film. Like, all right, like he's there a lot, right? But I thought the film was going to be about the three of them now. But really, what they think about is really about Jake and Mark as they are the, the, the most of, they are the more obsessive out of the three, to be honest, right? But yeah, um, and and also um, what what the show really means that that's this is at the heart of the story. Is yeah, just our obsession, uh, obsession with yeah, just the dark side of humanity, right? Um, to you know, in this case, oh, the Zodiac killer. Who is he killer? How can he do these things? How he get away with this, with these things? Why would he be willing to to let the you know the world know that he killed people? Like, you know, and we all like trying to get into the mindset of this killer, right? And then we just find ourselves going down this rabbit hole as well, right? So yeah, you, you don't blame a guy like Robert or a guy like Dave for 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 going deep into it as well too, right? Um, and also finally, I do like how untraditional, how unconventional, you know, as as far as Hollywood movies go, uh, this film is, right? Even right down to seeing well. Yeah, yeah, we didn't really find a killer, and we've had all these opportunities, and we still didn't catch him, right? So I know for some people probably seeing this for the first time, they'd be kind of disappointed. Like, yeah, we want to see the killer get caught, and we want to see some horror stuff, but that's that's not how things play out. And I love that Fincher was brave enough to say, "I'm gonna make, I'm gonna keep things the way how they were, and not you know water it down or glamorize it for you know the viewer, right? The viewer." has to go into this knowing what to expect, right? And yes, it is a slow burn. You have to kind of be in a mood to see it. But I would say that, yeah, if, if you're going just locked into it, yeah, you will be you you'll be entertained by by this though from start to end, man. So retail wise for me, I'm gonna give this uh, a, a light four and a half out of five, man. This is easily one of Fincher's best works though. It's a shame it took me 15 years to realize this. But yeah, this this is up there, man. This this is a great film. Um I still have seven and, and, and fight club over this though. But yeah, when it comes to great um Fincher of films or one of the you know when, when we talk about some of his great works yeah so yeah can be mentioned man so uh ricardo uh final thoughts on rita oh uh, yeah for me um it, i think because you know we had so much extra stuff since this came out but this was the, the proto the template for all of that stuff so if you're into crew crime podcast or even mind hunter other other fincher stuff that comes after um this doesn't really uh i won't say hold up but it doesn't you know land as well to be honest right um but back then, this movie really scratched that itch, and it worked really well. So I'll still rank it quite high, uh, even though watching it back recently, it's like, oh, okay, I wasn't that impressed with it or that, that wowed with it um, in, in, in retrospect. But still, you know, I like it a lot, and I enjoy it. I, I give it, uh, is, you know, probably my fourth or fifth best Fincher film. Um, rating, yeah, a 7 out of 10, probably closer to 8. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Daniel, final thoughts on rating? Final thoughts? It's a decent mystery thriller. I en- enjoyed it for what it was. I mean, you can't go wrong with a David Fincher film. I would put this slightly above Gone Girl, but ever so slightly. Um, I, g- I give it a 7 to 8 out of 10. Great performances about- across the board from Jake Gyllenhaal, Mark Ruffalo, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Everybody's great. Everybody's, ne- everybody's good. Do anything. I, I say it's a really decent film. Re- ch- please check it out if you can. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, to close things off, uh, final thoughts on written Tracy. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm thinking about it now, and I would legitimately give it a seven out of ten. For me, um, the length is fine. I don't have a problem with the length. I don't have a problem with any of that. I think the acting was cool. Um, it was kind of hilarious to see Robert Downey Jr. be Robert Downey Jr., you know, if, if you know what I mean, in terms of how <laughs> he operated there. Mm. Um, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the cinematography, the vibe of the look of it, um, and especially given where we're heading into next, I was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there's a lot of nods there um, that worked itself out. In terms of Fincher's movies, I am, like, I am one of those people who have seen uh, Panic Room, quite a few times me and mom would sit down and watch panic room that's that, that was a thing uh so it's panic room and it's seven and to be honest with you while i was watching this there were a few times and it is like i i really need to re-watch seven i really need to go back and watch so this is sort of triggering me to go back and watch seven uh so i would put this underneath those two um and then you know we can talk about like mank and that kind of thing um but yes <laughs> seven 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 let's go with seven to seven and a half out of ten for me it's fine this is good this is a good movie all right nice 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 